right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Dan Mangana, who is actually a little further south of me here in Cabo, Mexico. How are you doing, Dan? I'm really good. I'm really good. And nice to meet a fellow cross Atlanticite here, <laughs> here on the West Coast. Yeah, yeah. So Dan's originally from East London. I'm originally from South Dublin uh, in Ireland, in the UK. So yeah, we're both uh, refugees from cold weather. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And uh, what we're going to talk about today is why you don't actually want success and what to do about that. And I think this is a completely fascinating subject because I do often think that uh, you know, people talk a lot about fear of failure. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think people talk a lot of, enough about fear of success. Mm. And, uh, and that's why I'm fascinated by, by this subject today. And, uh, and Dan's on, on a mission to spearhead an evolutionary spirit in universal consciousness by awakening people to the importance of their own unique role already encoded within them. Mm. Which is, that's quite an undertaking. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, John, we do it one person at a time. Yeah. You know, I've, I've got no delusions about the fact that I may not see even a tenth of what I want to see accomplished in the world but mm -hmm. I'm going to keep chipping away at it and aim to leave a legacy where perhaps I inspire others to contribute to that mission uh, and we hit that critical mass and something changes. Yeah absolutely all right mm -hmm. so let's talk about uh, why, why do you think that people don't actually want success? So here's my view on this when we look at the mind the mind is a terminator. It's a perfect executing machine. It, we've never failed at anything. If you just think about that, the mind never fails at anything. So we've never failed at anything. So everything that we have is what we wanted to get, but we wanted it unconsciously. So when we're looking at people that say, I want to be successful, but they're not successful, maybe consciously they desire it, but unconsciously they certainly don't, or they will be there by now. Yeah. So, and, and I think that, and I think that's a, an incredibly important point because what normally happens is when, when people say they want to be successful and they're not successful is they start to look outside and they say, well, it's because of this or mm -hmm. it's because of that. And to your point, the answer may well lie within in the fact that mm -hmm. they unconsciously don't want to, or don't want to make the sacrifice or compromises that maybe they've got to make in order to be successful. Definitely. And you know, one of the things, and I find this in my own life too, one of the things sometimes we do is we look at the external representation of what follows on from the unconscious desire to fail and then focus on that. So we've got these real things. Yeah, but I do, I, I do have this situation or that person did do that or that person did do that and that did happen and we do have COVID, we do have this, blah, blah, blah. But those are external representations of where we're at internally. And when we start to make the change from the inside out, I'm not saying it's going to be easy all the time, but we can at least start to make some headway moving in the right direction. Some people have had a horrible 2020. Some people have had the best year ever. Some people have been challenged and some people have been expanded. And I feel personally, and I could be proven wrong about this at the end of the day, that the difference comes down to who they are internally and where they are in terms of whether they want to be successful or not at an unconscious level. Yeah, no, and I, I and I agree with you, and I think that's it. You can uh, there are people have experienced different things during during this period, and I do think that it's very easy to look outside and and we're very good at identifying reasons why things aren't going our way. <laughs> yes, and, especially when and, someone else is the perpetrator. Well, exactly, and, and it doesn't matter <laughs> even how how tenuous or tangential that may be. We find a way of saying, no, no, that that's the real reason. That's where it is. Why. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you start to how do you start to turn around and start to look internally? Because we live in this world that, to be honest, today that doesn't encourage any any sort of deep self reflection. It encourages superficiality and mm -hmm. moving fast and not really paying attention to anything. Mm -hmm. But we also have a choice of whether we subscribe to that or not. Yeah, and whether we t make that choice or not is going to depend on where we're at. I mean, look unconsciously we're running, I think it's like they say an average of 60,000 words, 60,000 thoughts a day. And I did the maths on that. That's 2,500 an hour, 41 thoughts a minute. 
the likelihood that we're going to be able to stay on top of those is really, really low. Mm -hmm. But those thoughts didn't come from nowhere. They're following a general environment that we either encourage, disrupt, support or deny based on what we do when we are consciously aware of what we're doing. So during that, I think they say 90 to 97 percent of the time we're unconscious. That three to 10 percent of the day, think about it, sleeping for eight hours, call it 16 hours of those 16 hours. Um, 1.6, maybe we're going to be conscious and that's going to be sprinkled across the day. What am I doing with that time that I am conscious? Am I asking myself where I am and directing it consciously and deliberately, or am I spending that time that I'm conscious, just complaining about what is blaming somebody else doing the woe is me. We do have time in the day that we can actually allocate to bringing a level of conscious awareness to where we're at and making conscious choices about where we're going to go next. But unless we claim the responsibility to do so, we're just going to be another slave to fate. Mm -hmm. I know I, I couldn't agree more. And, and that, uh, that concept of just the slave to fate or just outsourcing your future to fate is <laughs> I love it. fine, but it's a little risky. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just a little but, bit. But, yeah, but I come back to, to what you said about making the conscious choice, right? Mm hmm we humans struggle with choice. We really mm -hmm. struggle with choice. That's why we often defer to uh, or default to making no decision or no choice mm -hmm. on things, or we find it overwhelming. And I always find that maybe part of the reason why we struggle with choice is because by definition, when you choose something, you kind of unchoose other things. And we mm -hmm. don't like, we don't like a sort of saying, pushing other things aside or kind of letting go of our escape hatch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that we're always choosing. It's just whether that choice is made consciously or unconsciously. And again, 90 to 97% of the time, that's going to be an unconscious choice. But we do have a conscious choice about what we're allowing to remain as the unconscious pr program or blueprint that's feeding those choices. And if we're mm -hmm. not making the choice to step up and say, I'm choosing success, then whatever it is we've been getting is what we're going to continue to get. And for many, that isn't success. It's less than in your business or you get it but it's at the cost of having a home life or the cost of your health or time with family right getting the chance to go and do your your hobbies but it comes down to what i do with that time of the day that's gifted to me and if we see the 90 to 97 percent of the time as a gift the heavy lifting is being done for me but i need to give those workers the correct instruction as to what lifting they're doing and I think mm -hmm. that's where we lose sight of it. It's not a curse that the heavy lifting has been done. It's a gift, but it's a gift that we have to actually properly deploy and make use of. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a fantastic point there. And I think you also touched on something else uh, that I think is critical too, is, is I'm not sure a lot of people that we define exactly where we want to go or we mm -hmm. identify where it is we want to go or we even examine why it is we want to go there. Mm. I mean, look, I'm all about intention, intention and alignment. For me, intention is that point of conscious time being directed to disrupting, mm -hmm. bringing an intervention into what's going on unconsciously. And if I'm not doing that deliberately, then it's running on the unconscious program. And if my unconscious program contains success, I'd be successful already and we wouldn't be having this conversation. So obviously there's something up with whatever's going on at an unconscious level. So many of us do need to step up and say, what is it that I want? I want success in my business. What does that look like? Is it the number of people I'm serving? Is it the money I've got in the bank? Is it the change and impact I'm making in the world? What is it? And then, okay, what does that look like for me? Why do I want to do it? What's the leverage I have over myself for those times when it's going to get hard? There are going to be challenges so that I don't just revert back to default. I'm committed through the, through the, the gateway of that leverage to actually going out and, and creating more. Yeah, and I think that's the and I and I think that's incredibly important that idea that you have to actually define what it is you want because mm. it's easy to say I want a successful business or I want a successful whatever. But to your point, unless you actually define what that really means, uh, then how will you know when you achieve it? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't, and yeah. then the cycle doesn't get completed. We stay in that space of flux. I think it's dis. Is it syntropy when everything falls apart before it comes back together again? I never remember which word it is. But if we're in that space, even that's a choice too. And that's a creation. It just happens to be the space of instability, uh, indecisiveness, nothing coming together, 
people always in flow, quote unquote, or always in mm -hmm. flux or in the river of change versus just bloody making the choice to close that loop and get into actually living life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and it's funny i mean i think that's i think that's a great point that you make though about living life because i think i think a lot of people who who are who are in flux are going with the floor and chaos where but they think that that's what life is mm -hmm. uh, and i think sometimes don't realize you know the, how much control they have over not all the external things but over their reaction to it and how mm -hmm. they want to actually live their particular lives and you know what i think sometimes People just do that because that's what that's all they know. They mm -hmm. haven't given themselves the opportunity to experience different, or they're so hardwired to living life under those terms that they don't even know another another choice is available to them. Wow, and I, 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 I want to underline that for people because that's a that's a great point. There is that I think yeah, maybe a lot of people don't realize there is an alternative to the way mm -hmm. that they are that they are, they are living right now. So what advice would you give if somebody, if you were to advise somebody starting right now mm -hmm. uh, to start to take a little bit more control and, and understand themselves a little bit more and go, what, what would be some of the first things you would advise them to do? Well, you know, the thing is, John, you were just, we we're just talking about people not knowing. And for me, my mission is about letting people know. Yeah. And not everybody's gonna take it up. Some people will be offered that choice and they're not ready to let go of their patterns. They're not ready to let go of the addiction, the real addiction in the body to the experiences and patterns of behavior that they're playing out. Or they're not ready to do the work that's gonna be demanded of them to break free. So the first thing I think is, this comes down to my, my beyond intention model that I created. Mm -hmm. It's just accepting where you're at now, whatever that looks like. Is it that, do you know what? I recognize that things aren't really working out for me, but I'm not ready to end this relationship. I know that she's no good for me. I know he's no good for me, but I love him or I love her. And I'm, mm -hmm. I, I want to stay here. What, and rather than making up excuses, pretending that you want to go, just I'm, I'm addicted to it and I'm okay with that. Or it could be, do you know what? I know that my business is going to demand of me learning how to sell and getting on the phone and overcoming my fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go and get the help to do that. Or... I'm not ready to do that right now. Okay, well, guess what? You can go and hire someone else to do that for you yeah. instead. So we can make empowering choices from a place of true acceptance of where we are now. So that's the very first thing. Honest self audit, who I am, where I am, and what I'm not prepared to let go of, because yeah. then I can look at where I'm gonna bring in support, where I'm gonna expand into, what development I'm gonna do, or where I'm gonna quit complaining and just accept. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm an asshole around this situation, hey, I don't like doing that. Hey, I've been chasing after somebody else's narrative. I don't even want to be a business person. I want to right. go and be in the circus. Whatever it is, we can start to make more empowering choices from that space of acceptance. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and Dan, I think this is so profound that I really want people to, to focus in on this because I, I totally agree with you. I, I think sometimes people are going around saying things that they think are expected of them. Right. Mm. I'm, I should be. So maybe you're in, maybe you're in, in business or you're, you're working in a company and you think, OK, uh, I should be trying to be a manager and move up. But may, yeah. as you say, but maybe you deep down, you don't really want to. You're just happy doing your job. You're happy with the other. <laughs> but but you but of course you go for the job and you say, oh, yeah, yeah, I want to get on and all of that. <laughs> and it's not true. <laughs> and I think I think sometimes that I think there's something liberating about maybe and it, it may have to be turning around to members of your family or whatever and say, no, mm. I'm, I'm OK where I am. I'm literally I'm OK. <laughs> right now. <laughs> do you know what? What's really funny, John, is um, I don't do much one on one coaching now. Um, mm -hmm. It was my one-on-one -on -one coaching because of everything else that's going on with life. Sure. I've taken very few people for the one-on-one -on -one coaching. But when I first started with the one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, one of the things that happened was that I ended up helping people through midlife crisis. And that's where I found to be a really powerful deployment of my Beyond Intention model. And the reason why is because people were coming to an awareness unconsciously that they weren't living the life that they wanted to live. And that's why mm -hmm. I, I truly believe a midlife crisis is. It's yeah. waking up to the fact that I've been living somebody else's story. And when that's not handled consciously, when it's sort of, we don't know what we're doing, ah, that's when people go off and buy a motorbike or they yeah. quit their job and just 
leave the family or go and have an affair or get an addiction because they're coping with the fact that, oh my God, I've spent the last 10, 15, 20 years living somebody else's narrative, living somebody else's story, and I don't know what my own is. But when yeah. you do have the power to just step in, just accept where you are now, then the, the landscape opens for you to start writing your own story. But we can't do it until we accept who and what we are right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I missed out on a midlife crisis because they kept changing, uh, you know, the average lifespan. So I'm like, <laughs> at what point should I have it? <laughs> where, where, where does it come in? Yeah, <laughs> where does it exactly? No, but uh, I, th I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a fantastic point there. I, I do think that, and I do think that a, a lot of people that go along, as you say, living, uh, living a different, living a uh, somebody else's narrative, or, or just as I say, like going along doing what they think is expected of them mm. um, rather than finding out what they really want to do. And at the end of the day, if you do, if you, if you do some self-reflection and you decide that you're quite happy with where you are and you're quite happy with the status quo, well, that's fantastic, right? They should know it. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but you got to stop pretending then that you're not. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, and this is the thing I think so many people, and there's a lot of shame associated with things. Yeah. I mean, even when we look at this whole election thing, so many people are being shamed about who they want to vote for or yeah. what ideologies they hold. Why not just let people be themselves and be who you are and everyone makes the choices about what they want from a place of acceptance and truth? Things will be a lot, <laughs> a lot smoother versus all of this stuff. And I'm going to morally bash you for this and I'm going to tell you this and blah, blah, blah. And, it's nonsensical and it just takes up all of the energy that we could be using to create the reality that we want for ourselves. Yeah. And I tell you, I mean, I would love, I would love that what you just said, I would love that to be broadcast across, certainly across, the country <laughs> right now, here, across this country, but I think across the world in general is that I think yeah. unfortunately, and technology and social media has enabled this, but you're correct is like people invest so much time pontificating and shouting mm -hmm. at other people and pointing out and you to your point if even a fraction of that energy was directed <laughs> internally the world would probably be a better place and the other part is as i say to people all the time uh i just can't i can't think of an example where shouting at somebody and calling them stupid ever changed their mind about <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'll, just I'll go a step further I can't think of uh, the, the reality that you forcing your opinion on someone else is going to change anything. If someone is open to a change and there's a dialogue happening where you're exchanging yeah. ideas, but that happens when both people are open to sharing ideas, not one person being in the right. And I am the one who is right. I will give you the truth. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the other, and, and the <laughs> other thing as well is, uh, is at the end of the day, uh, it's all about modeling behavior anyway. It's because what mm -hmm. you do at the end of the day, if you see somebody and you go, wow, that seems like an interesting person. They seem to have, they seem to have their stuff together. They seem mm -hmm. to like, um, I really like the way they interact, all of that kind of stuff. Then you're more likely to want to learn more about them and their ideas and that, and that actually, you may adopt some of those, but not if somebody mm -hmm. walks up to you and starts going, tell you, <laughs> like, this oh is what God. you need to believe. <laughs> patting you on Twitter or whatever it is. Yeah. I've, I've, been, I've been getting back onto Twitter recently, not to take up too much time, but yeah. um, it's been fascinating watching the way that people bash each other. And oh, it's, it's fascinating. It's, in, it's insane. And then I'm thinking about, what about, this is what you're teaching your kids now. <laughs> I mean, I've seen, I've seen people you know, that, that I'm, I'm acquainted with and I, who are going mental on this. And I'm just thinking, like, what, what kind of example are you setting for your kids here? Come on. <laughs> More will be accomplished just by directing inwards and making choices from that space and then being a good example for other people to do the same than yeah. bashing people on the Internet, I think. Personally. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And kind of coming back to what you what you said at the beginning about, you know, even changing you know, one person at a time. Um, I do believe in that. I think that if, if everybody did some self reflection and then was a little bit of a, you know, was more secure in themselves, was a better partner, spouse, whatever, parent, mm. you know, member of, the member of the community, the ripple effect of that is massive. Mm. way bigger than way bigger than going on twitter and having mm. a go at people 
So I think, you know, your message is like if everybody just took a step back and you're not going to get a better chance than this pandemic, unfortunately, to <laughs> carve out a little bit of time for introspection, right? So if you miss this window, yeah. <laughs> that was as much hope for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So what's one other piece of advice you give to people before we wrap up today, Dan? To be gentle with yourself as you do this introspection, as you do this acceptance. Don't allow it to be a gateway into shame and to guilt and to beating yourself up, which is just another distraction that's going to pull you back from the task at hand, which is accepting who and what you are right now, lovingly and completely, and then allowing that to be a gateway into choosing what do I want to be, what do I continue, what do I want to drop, and where do I need some support in order to get to where I want to be. Yeah, no, that's great advice. The idea of like, being gentle with yourself and some self forgiveness because you don't want it to turn into a, a session where instead of other people bashing you, you're just bashing yourself. You're bashing yourself instead. <laughs> But I'd love this. Okay, so all of Dan's information will be below this video here. But before we go, Dan, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Um, Daniel Mangena, uh, Dreamer CEO, empowering people to live more abundant, joyful, purpose-driven lives by choice. Um, everything's over at dreamwithdan.com. There's books, there's podcasts, and there's a cool video on how to be a harmonious money magnet as well on the website. Harmonious money magnet. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. If if that if that doesn't attract people, I don't know what would. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a pun there, John? Was there a pun? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Not at all. Um, <laughs> listen, Dan, this has been fantastic. I really would Thank encourage you. you to go over and check uh, dreamwithdan.com. I think the, what Dan is talking about right now is incredibly, incredibly important. I think if you know, we deserve to live fulfilled and happy lives, but that's never going to happen until you really know what's going on inside of yourself mm. and you make some conscious choices. So I would uh, recommend that you go check it out. And like I said, you're not going to get a better chance than right now for a little bit of introspection definitely all right my name is john golden sales pop online sales magazine pipeline of crm see you off for another interview really soon thank you